Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about cells and organelles. So I just drew a very large circle which is going to represent our cell. And the membrane outside of my cell is the cell membrane. So I will label that here. As you might know, the cell membrane is made up of a phospholipid bilayer, which means that we have phospholipid heads on the facing the inside and facing the outside of the membrane with two hydrophobic tails within. So again, heads are lined up to face the inside of the cell and heads are lined up to be facing the outside of the cell. This is because the heads are hydrophilic, which means they like the water that is inside the cell and they like to be with the water that is outside the cell. On the other hand, the tails are hydrophobic which means they are water-fearing and therefore want to be away from the water. So imagine this, but all around the entire cell. The next part that we're going to look at is the nucleus. And the nucleus is normally the darker stained spot within a cell. This is the nucleus. So I'll label that here, nucleus. And within the nucleus, we have a darker structure, very small, known as the nucleolus. Surrounding the nucleus, we have a membrane. The membrane is called the nuclear envelope. And within the nuclear envelope, we have some openings. These openings are called nuclear pores. These nuclear pores allow genetic information in the form of RNA to leave the nucleus. So I'll actually draw some of that in here. We'll draw some DNA, or we'll just draw some genetic information. And then I'll just write that down as genetic information. So the genetic information lies within the nucleus, and it can only leave when it is in the form of RNA leaving through a nuclear pore. The next structure that I'd like to highlight is the endoplasmic reticulum. The endoplasmic reticulum looks like a series of interconnected, interwoven membranes. And I'll sort of leave it like this. And I'll actually draw two of them and you'll see why in a moment. These are both endoplasmic reticulums. On this endoplasmic reticulum, I'll draw some small red dots. These red dots can also be found in other areas of the cell. The small red dots are ribosomes. Because this endoplasmic reticulum has the ribosomes on it, it has a bit of a rougher texture. And for that reason, we call this endoplasmic reticulum the rough endoplasmic reticulum. So I'll label that here, rough endoplasmic reticulum. It is often known as the RER. On the other hand, this endoplasmic reticulum lacks ribosomes. Therefore, we call it a smooth endoplasmic reticulum because it doesn't have that grainy texture due to the ribosomes. We'll talk a little bit about the functions later, but first let's get everything down and then I'll elaborate a bit more on the functions. So over here, I'll draw a bit of a similar structure, just a blob, and we call this one the Golgi apparatus. Also within a cell, you will find some mitochondria. Mitochondria typically look like jelly beans, and they have many, many folds within them that look like lace. So these are mitochondria. In addition to the mitochondria, you will find within a cell several things that look just like plain old circles, and these are called lysosomes. You will also find another organelle that looks a bit like a star 
and a two. So it's like a cylindrical star hybrid thing. And we call these centrioles. Normally you'll find a pair of centrioles and they look like so. So I'll label that here, centrioles. That's it for all of the organelles. Now let's go into a little bit more detail about their roles and responsibilities. And I'll write them down in orange. So the nucleus is sort of the brain of the cell. If this was, if this was a city, the nucleus would be city hall because it provides all of the rules and contains all the important information. So in brackets, I'll do brain of the cell. And again, it contains very important genetic information. The ribosomes are responsible for producing protein. Their job is to make protein. Similarly, the rough endoplasmic reticulum is responsible for making protein. As you can tell, the rough ER is able to make proteins because of the presence of ribosomes that lie on it. The cell membrane is responsible for actually numerous things, such as uh, maintaining fluidity, cell structure, and more. The Golgi apparatus is responsible for packaging but before it packages proteins, it must modify. So modifying and packaging and shipping proteins. I like to think of the Golgi apparatus like a post office. So for example, if the Golgi was taking in this brush, it would take it, I need to add some adjustments, I might need to change some things, add some things on, and then, okay, it's ready to be shipped. So I'll package it up inside a structure called a vesicle, and then I'll then ship it off to leave the cell. And I'll show you a little example of that later. Again, modifying, packaging, and shipping proteins. The mitochondria you probably know is the powerhouse of the cell, and what it does is it produces energy in the form of ATP. Produces ATP. And I'll do in brackets, energy. This is extremely important because without ATP, the nucleus wouldn't be able to function. Without energy, the ribosomes couldn't make proteins. Without energy, the lysosomes couldn't perform their role, which is to clean cell debris. I'll make a note of that here, cleaning cell debris. Again, back to that city example, if the nucleus is city hall, and the Golgi is playing the role of a post office, the lysosomes would be the pickup trucks for garbage. So what they would do is sort of drive around the cell, cruising around, and they're looking for waste. Let's say part of the smooth ER breaks off. It is now just waste floating around in the cell. The lysosome needs to pick up the cell debris, the remnants of the smooth ER, and then release it to the exterior of the cell. It's cleaning up the cell just like a garbage truck would. Next we have the centrioles. The centrioles play a role in cell division. During mitosis, they have an important part in releasing spindle fibers that pull the genetic information in half. As for the smooth ER, we can look back on the rough ER and note that the rough ER makes proteins. If the smooth ER is lacking ribosomes, which make proteins, the logical conclusion is that the smooth ER makes lipids. The smooth ER has a whole host of other responsibilities, such as detoxifying cells, and you can find a lot of the ER in actually the human liver. Taking a look at all of this, let's go on a pathway of what a protein would take as it's leaving the cell.